Welcome to the WHHI Daily News. I'm Robin Zimmerman. Let's begin with today's news headlines. Not a whole lot of difference between the two candidates in the runoff for mayor of Hilton Head in their general election vote totals. Joanne Orsicek got about 400 more votes last Tuesday, but not 50%, necessitating the runoff next Tuesday. At a League of Women Voters Forum Tuesday night, the primary difference that came out was Orsicek's pledge to be a full-time mayor, while Perry says he'll keep his job as a mortgage banker on the island, stressing that it's quality time, not the hours spent, that really matters. Now, both candidates said there needs to be a balance between supporting tourism on the island and serving permanent residents, or such a check, suggesting the island should not as aggressively promote itself nationally, while Perry wants to control the day trippers staying off island, but using town services and bringing in little economic value. Now, both candidates have been invited to appear on the WHHI Daily News between now and Election Day. Your regular polling place will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. next Tuesday in Hilton Head. But if you want to vote early, you can go to the county government office across from First Presbyterian Church Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week between 8.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. Or drive up to Buford and vote at the county election office on John Galt Road. If you voted absentee in the general election and requested an absentee ballot, in case of a runoff, well, you'll automatically be sent one. You did not have to vote in the general election to vote in the runoff. Every family's worst nightmare being played out by a couple visiting in Buford, where police are investigating the drowning of a two-year-old boy at the Country Inn and Suites Hotel pool over the weekend. Employees saw the boy's five-year-old sibling wandering around the property alone and called the police and then found the toddler in the pool. Their parents were found in their hotel room. And the five-year-old and a newborn were then taken by the Department of Social Services. The police investigation continues and no charges have yet been filed. While well, the outgoing Hilton Head Town Council has adopted a master plan for what's currently being called the Mid-Island Track, the area around the Old Planters Row Golf Course. The centerpiece will be a 103-acre passive but multi-use park that can be used for weddings and small music events. It will contain an interactive water feature and playground, an open-air market, and community gardens, observation, decks, and boardwalks. Now, the next step is designing and then paying for those amenities. You can see the master plan on the town's website. Well, for some reason, it's a natural response for kids to want to dig holes when you first visit the beach, especially if, if you think you might unearth a treasure like a shark's tooth. But the town of Port Royal has seen enough of adults using metal shovels to dig holes as deep as three feet and is working on an ordinance to limit the use of the metal shovels and the depth of the holes. Digging more than a foot deep with anything other than a plastic shovel should be banned under the new ordinance. And excavators who don't cover up their holes could be fined up to $500. And finally, the main gate of Marine Corps Air Station Buford will be closed for gate improvements. The Marines have said that the gate was closed yesterday at 5 a.m., but motorists can still get access during the main gate closure. The primary way to enter the base will be from the truck gate on Kimes Avenue, north of the main gate on Trask Parkway, Highway 21. All outboard, outbound traffic will leave through the outbound lanes of the main gate as normal. Now, the MCAS Buford Visitor Center will be closed during the main gate closure. Urgent business that is normally conducted at the MCAS Buford Visitor Center can be completed at the Paris Island Visitor Center. For more information on these stories and many more, please check out the media sources listed on your screen. And remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And check out our website at whhitv.com. And if you have a news tip, a story idea, or a cool weather photo, well, you can just check out, send it to our email at, w, at news at whhi.com. And now, let's get an update on sports from Justin Jarrett. Justin. 
Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. Bluffton's own Bryson Nimmer will tee it up on the PGA Tour this weekend after qualifying for the RSM Classic down in Sea Island with a 7 under par 63 in a Monday qualifier at Brunswick Country Club. Nimmer fired five birdies and an eagle in a bogey-free round to finish second and claim one of four spots up for grabs in this week's PGA Tour event. In other golf news, Hilton Head prep star Bridget Wilkie continued her torrid play by winning the SCJGA's 26th Annual Players' Championship this weekend at Hartsville Country Club. Wilkie shot four under par 140 to cruise to an eight-shot win with May River's Claire Green tied for second. And the high school cross country season wrapped up this weekend with the state championships. The Bluffton Bobcats led the way with the boys finishing third overall and the girls fourth in the class 4A standings. While May River's Anya Arroyo finished third in the girls race and Bluffton's Erlon Baker was seventh in the boys race. Whale Branch's Jesse Richardson finished fourth in class 1A boys and Buford freshman phenom Gavin Moore placed fifth in the 3A boys race. Tomorrow we'll tell you which loco hoop squads cracked the preseason top 10 and celebrate three Bluffton softball stars headed to the next level. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. Great update, Justin. And now let's check out weather. Maria, what's going on? Thanks, Robin. Yep, so taking a look ahead, Tuesday we're going to see an increase in the temperature again. It's going to be cloudy with Hillnet having a high of 68, a low of 51. Bluffton's going to have a high of 67, a low of 50. And Beefer's going to have a high of 66 and a low of 50. The sunrise for Wednesday is going to be at 6.53 and sunset's going to be at 5.22. Taking a look at the beach tides, low tide's going to be at 9.49 a.m. and high tide's going to be at 2.34 p.m. Taking a look into the rest of the week and into the weekend, Thursday it's going to be cloudy and we are going to see a drop in temperature. Highs are going to get in the 50s and lows are going to be in the 40s. Taking a look at Friday, it's going to be sunny but chilly and the highs are going to be in the 50s again, but the lows are going to get into the 30s and 40s overnight. And then taking a look at Saturday, it's going to be sunny and the highs are going to get in the 60s, but the lows are going to stay in the 40s and 30s. That's it for today. Let's head back to the desk. Thanks, Maria. Coming up after the break, Jeff Prokop will be with us. He is with Rescue Paws International, a group that has been helping out animals in Ukraine. Stay with us.